Chapter 8, we're going to talk about what we need to do with those adjusting entries that we worked on back in Chapter 6 in your worksheets. Uh, and then we're also going to talk about closing entries for a business, for what they have to do at the end of the fiscal period to close out their books. So our goals for Chapter 8, we're going to work on uh, understanding some terms relating to adjusting and closing entries. We're going to identify the ca uh, accounting concepts relating to adjusting and closing entries. We're going to understand what the difference is between temporary and permanent accounts, how those relate to our adjusting and closing entries, and then lastly, we're going to prepare a post-closing trial balance. Beginning of Chapter 6, we started working out with um, a trial balance. Now we're going to deal with what we call the post-closing trial balance. So after we close the business's books, the trial balance that we're going to prepare after the books are closed. Um, and then this is the final step in the accounting cycle. So at the beginning of the year, we started out, we, we started out analyzing our business and our, our adjusting, um, pardon me, our entries for a business, understanding debits and credits and all of that. Um, we journalized our transactions and then we posted our transactions. We did our bank reconciliations. Um, we prepared um, a trial balance, we prepared adjustments, we prepared income statements, balance sheets. That's all part of our accounting process and now the last piece is to close our books and that's what we're going to learn in this chapter. Then we've taken the accounting process all the way through a cycle. Now the nice thing about that is once you know that cycle, it's the same cycle. Time after time after time after time business after business after business after business. It's all the same. You, you, the things that are different is that each business is different and each business is going to have slightly different accounts and the like. So if you remember at the beginning of the year, I had said to you guys that the nice thing about accounting is that once you understand the core concepts of how things work, it's very transferable. You know, smaller businesses, larger businesses, they all have to do this. It's just that it's scalable, okay? The smaller the business, maybe the little bit less complicated it is. The bigger the business, a little bit more complicated, okay? So, first thing, we did those adjustments back in Chapter 6 in our worksheets. If you remember, you had that trial balance, and then what we had to do is we had to do adjustments to take into consideration that there was some sort of change that took place from the beginning of that cycle to the end of the cycle. So if you had, we'll use it as an example, um, our supplies account, okay? If we had our supplies account, we would have that information in our trial balance and then we would um, have the balance at the end of the, that fiscal period out there in the balance sheet columns. Well, we did the adjustment on our worksheet, and that adjustment showed the difference between what we had in our um, ledger to what we actually have on hand, just like we did with our little bags of candies, okay? I had given you different amounts of candies all for several class periods, but I said you could eat them. That's kind of showing you how you use things up just like a business does. You guys ate up your candy at business, businesses use up their supplies. Okay? So our adjustment was to show the difference between what we actually had in our bag and what we thought we had in our ledger. Okay? So all of our information for these entries that we're going to do is going to come from our worksheet. It's going to come from first the, um, the adjustments column in our worksheet. Okay? And uh, somebody asked me on their test, they had noticed that I had written the little A's and the little B's, okay? We kind of got a little away from the A's and the B's because Applia doesn't allow you to do, uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> the A and the B in the, um, in the entry on Applia. Uh, but really, the two parts of each adjustment, um, so your supplies, you credited, and then you debited the supplies expense, that would be letter A, entry A. And then B, if we did prepaid insurance, we had a credit to our prepaid insurance, and then we had a debit to our 
our insurance expense. So that would be the B transaction. So the A and the B just went together to show you the, the, um, the debit and credit part of each adjustment. Okay. So we're going to match the le letters from our worksheet adjustment columns to come up with the entries that we have to do. Because if you remember, this information right now is just in our worksheet. Okay, It's not been entered into our journal and it's not been posted to our ledger. So in order to update those pieces of information, we actually have to do a journal entry and then post that journal entry so that we update our ledger. So this is the process that we're going to go through. We're going to take the information from over here in our worksheet. So these are our worksheet columns. Okay, We have our supplies account and we do the A part of it and we credit our supplies and then we have the debit to our supplies expense. So those two pieces make up our um, journal entry that we're going to put down here. So this is a snapshot of our journal page. And we see that we have a title called Adjusting Entries on page 3 of our journal. And it's the end of the month. We only do these adjusting entries at the end of the fiscal period, whether it's the month or the year or the semi-annual period, whatever the case may be. We only do them at the end of the of the um, period, just like when we do our worksheet. So then we take the A part of our transaction for the debit, because we always do our debit first, and we put that on our, on our, in our journal page, and we put a supplies expense, and then we take the credit part, and we credit our supplies. So those are the two parts of our adjusting entry. Oops, it's not letting me advance, sorry. So we write the heading, adjusting entries, and then we take the date, and then we write the title of the account debited, and record that, and we write the title of the account that's credited, and we record that. I think my lines don't match up 100%. Okay. Then we, had, we do the same exact thing for the other adjusting entries, whatever they might be. In this case, we just have prepaid insurance and insurance expense, and we do the same thing down here. We do our, we're going to write our date, same date, because again, at the end of the of fiscal period, we're going to write our debit amount, which is our, for our B transaction. We're going to write um, our debit to our insurance expense, and then we're going to write our credit to our prepaid insurance. And that's it for our adjusting entries. Pretty simple, really, because the information just comes from that adjustments column in our worksheet. Now, the next piece is really understanding what's the difference between a permanent account and what we call a temporary account. Permanent accounts have what we call continuous balances. Those balances flow from one fiscal period to the next. So think about it, most easy concept is to do with your cash. So how many of you have a bank account? Hopefully all of you. Okay. Most of you seem like you have a bank account. So at the end of December, which is, you know, your, let's say, um, tax year, at the end of December, December 31st, if you have $1,000 in your bank account, what's the balance in your bank account on January 1st? $1,000, right? That doesn't go away, does it? No, absolutely not. Hopefully. <laughs> unless, unless, you, unless you bought Mrs. McGrath a really big Christmas present, it doesn't go away. Okay? So that's what we would call a permanent account, okay? The ending balance for one period is the beginning balance for the next period. Your permanent accounts are assets, liabilities, and capital. Those are your only permanent accounts. Then we have what we call temporary accounts or nominal accounts. The balances for those accounts are isolated for a specific period of time our fiscal period, whatever that fiscal period might be. They accumulate the information for that account during that fiscal period only. 
and then those changes in those accounts are reflected in our capital account at the end of the fiscal period. At the end of the fiscal period, the balances for the temporary accounts are totaled up and transferred to the capital account. Therefore, we begin each fiscal period for our temporary accounts with a zero balance. Your typical um, temporary accounts are any of your revenues, your expenses, or your owner's drawing account. So, think about it again for you guys. From an individual standpoint, how many of you have a job? Many of you? Okay. And you guys, even if you don't have a job, you know that when you're talking about your parents, let's say, your parents, let's say your mom or dad, they make $50,000 a year. We're talking about from January 1st of a year to December 31st of a year. Is that correct? Yes? Yes. Okay. So when they do their taxes at the end of the year, they're doing their taxes based on their income from January 1st to December 31st. If your mom makes $50,000 a year, come January 1, how much money has she made for the year and the next year? No? Zero. zero. She's made zero. Okay. Because she made 50000 from January 1st to December 31st. We don't say she's made it for January 1st to January 1st or January 1st to January 2nd, okay? It's for whatever that fiscal period is, and typically for individuals, it's January to December, January 1st to Je December 31st, okay? So when you're talking about your annual salary, it's for that period of time, an annual period of time, okay? So um, come January 1, she starts back at zero, okay? Same with you guys. If you guys were going to report, hey, folks, Whoever the telephone's out, could you please do me a favor and put them away? Away means away. Thank you. Um, so when, when December 31st comes, that's the last day of your fiscal period that you're reporting income for. So then it cleans it out, and then that's what we've got to roll into that year's um, owner's capital account or owner's equity, okay? And that's what we'll learn about next, okay? And we'll prepare what we call closing entries to walk us through accumulating the information from the revenues, expenses, and owner's drawing account and rolling it into the owner's capital account. So the closing process is relating only, only to our temporary accounts, okay? And the idea behind it is to re reduce the balance in those temporary accounts to zero so that we can start the new year off with a zero balance. It basically prepares those temporary accounts for the new fiscal period. Otherwise, the new fiscal period would include amounts from the previous fiscal period, and you can't do that. And the closing process allowed business to transfer the income or loss to the owner's capital account, and it applies that matching of expenses and revenues concept that we've talked about before, as does the adjusting entries. The adjusting entries also help us to apply that matching of expenses and revenues because now we're adjusting those accounts for the expenses that they had in that fiscal period. If you remember, the adjusting account entry had one expense account in there. Each one of them will always have one expense account in there to um, show that you're updating the expenses that you've used during that fiscal period. Okay. So the closing process is where we take an amount equal to the temporary account's balance and we record it on the opposite side of the balance that it's reported on and then transfer that amount over to the capital account. So if, for instance, your revenue has a credit balance of $3,565, in order to close out that account, we're going to debit it for $3,565 to close it out. Whenever a temporary account is closed, the ending balance 
um, is going to be zero, and the closing entry is going to have equal debit and credits. Okay, so whatever the balance was is what you're going to do the opposite to it. Okay, we're going to do that quiz. We'll do that quiz next class. Okay. So you should know this by the end of today. You should know which are temporary and which are permanent accounts. Okay. Um, all right, you want to do this? You guys should know this now. Let's do this now. Okay. What is cash? Is it a temporary account or a permanent account? Permanent. Okay. How about capital? Permanent. How about sales? Temporary. Okay, you guys get the idea. Go through the rest of them real quick. And... Um, We'll go over them. We're going to do the next page, too. My bad. Okay. Um, okay, so income summary. Before, we did do the income summary in Chapter 6, a little bit. We just introduced you to it, okay? The income summary is a temporary account that we roll the balances to help us with the closing process. All, it's the ultimate temporary account. It does not have a normal side balance. And you'll see why when we walk through the closing process. Its balance depends upon whether you have an income, a net income or net loss, okay? Because we ultimately roll the net income or loss into the income summary account before we roll it into the capital account, okay? Balances are determined by the amounts posted at, at the end of each fiscal period. The way that we get the balance for the income summary is based on the debit and credits associated with the expense accounts and the revenue accounts. Okay, So if your revenue are greater than your expenses, then you're going to get a credit balance. In the, um, the credit balance is a net income. And if your debits are greater than your credits, then you would have a net loss and your income summary is going to have a debit balance. Okay? These are the process, this is the process for doing your closing entries. You have to do them in this order. So make sure you write that down here. Must be done in this order. Okay, the first accounts that you're going to close are your income statement accounts with a credit balance. So what your income statement, balance, uh, income statement accounts with a credit balance are? Sales. Revenues, good. Sales, good. Income statement accounts then with debit balances are? Expenses. Expenses. And then you do the entry to record your net income or your net loss and close it to the income summary account. That's your third step. And then the fourth step of the closing process is to close your drawing account. So this is to close, this closes sales. This closes expenses. This closes net income or loss. And this closes drawing. Okay, so those are your four closing entry. Close sales, close expenses, close net income or loss, and then close drawing. Those are your four closing entries. Always, always the same. And in that order. Are we good? Go on. So, first thing, we're going to get all this information again from our worksheet. So, to close our sales, if our balance is a credit balance, our balance is a credit balance, in order to close our sales, we have to debit it, right? Because if its normal side balance is a credit, to get its balance down to zero, don't we have to debit it? Logically, you with me? Yeah? Okay. So we're going to debit our sales, okay, 
and then we're going to credit it to the income summary account. This is on, again, our page three of our journal, and we're going to start it out by putting a little heading that says these are our closing entries. So those are the, these are the pieces. Write the heading, write the date, write the title of the debit, write the title of the credit, and the amounts. Move on. Now we're going to close our expenses. And again, we get this all, this is all coming from the income statement columns of the worksheet. This is our worksheet. And since we have multiple expenses, we're going to do a compound entry to close all of our expenses at the same time. And in order to close them, if there are normal side balances of debit, to close the balances and get them to, to zero, we're going to do a credit. So we're going to credit all of those expense accounts to close their balances down to zero, and we're going to close them into our income summary account. What we should end up noticing is that this number, what should this number total? Correct. It should come to the total of the, in, uh, the expense column in the, in the worksheet. If it doesn't, then you've done something wrong, so you've got to pay attention to that. Okay, so, so again, our, our process is to do the date. We're going to do um, the income summary account for the total. We're going to do the credit to each of the expense accounts, and then um, the debit amount for the income summary. All right. Now we're going to close our income summary. So if you notice here, we had, this is the total for all of our expenses back from the other page. And this is the sales. The difference between the two is that we have a net income. So if it's over here in this um, net income column, we're going to close the income summary by debiting it, and then we're going to credit to our owner's capital. So we close the income summary account to our owner's capital because at the end of the day, what do we want to have happen? We want to roll all that stuff, the business made or lost, into the owner's capital account because that's the permanent account. So we're going to put the date, we're going to put the debit, we're going to put the credit, and then, oops, my bad, oops. And then we're done with that journal entry. So again, all the information for all of these entries is coming from the um, income statement columns of the worksheet. Any questions so far? You guys are all good? All right. Moving right along. The drawing account. The last piece is going to be to close our owner's drawing because this is another temporary account. And we're going to close the drawing right into the capital account. So if it's normal side balances, a debit, then in order to close it, we have to credit it. The date again, same thing, the 31st, it's the end of the fiscal period. We do the debit amount. And if you think about it, it's very logical. It does make sense. What is the owner's drawing? Is it a reduction to our owner's capital? Yes. Absolutely. So when we're closing our drawing account and then we're going to debit our owner's capital account, when we debit our owner's capital account, what happens to the balance of the capital account? It's going to go down, right? Because its normal side balance is a credit. So if we debit it by the amount of the drawing, it's going to make the owner's capital account go down. Okay? So we debit our owner's capital, we credit the drawing to get the balance down to zero in the drawing account because we want to wipe it clean and so it starts out the new year with a zero balance or the new fiscal period with a zero balance. All right, and those are all of your closing entries. And then at the end of the day, after you're done with all your adjusting entries and your closing entries, then all of your balances for your accounts are up to date. All of your asset liability and um, 
owner's equity, your capital account are all up to date. And if you look closely in your notebook, um, in your notes on, on that page, what I want you to look at is if you look down here on these expenses over here, if you look at these balances here in your expenses, these are your ledger, this is the ledger pages. If you notice here, what is it showing me in the balance column for my expenses? It's showing me my balances are zero. Okay? Because what have I done? I had, I had these expenses, these were debits, okay? And then when I credited it, credited it for that $1,300 balance or $213 balance that it was, it brings the balance down to zero. Okay, same thing over here with my sales, my sales account, okay? My sales were, I, totaled, I had a total accumulated sales of 3565 for this period. Then when I go and I debit it and I roll that amount into my income summary, 3565 okay, I get my zero balance down here at the end of this period. Then when I look at my income summary, I can see where my sales balance came in here. I can see where my 1,466 in total expenses came in here. And if you notice, I have my credit and then I have my debit. So now my balance over here in my um, income summary account is now at the 2,099 that showed as my profit on my worksheet. Like if you go back the couple pages in your notes and you look at your worksheet, it shows you that the, the, the profit was 2099 Then when I close this out, we can see up here in my owner's capital account, see how I close it out, and it's adding 2000 is crediting 2099 to my owner's capital balance. And so it brings my balance from 5000 up to 7099 Then when I close out the drawing, which is down here, I close out my drawing, Okay, it's showing how I'm reducing by debiting my owner's capital account. It's reducing my owner's capital from the seven thousand ninety-nine down to the six hundred forty-seven, six thousand four hundred seventy-four. Okay, so that's how the whole thing all works together. Okay, all of these balances come down to zero in these temporary accounts. Okay, all of them come to zero at the end. And they all ultimately end up getting rolled up into our owner's capital account. Okie dokie. And now that is it.